Howdy guys and welcome to Cliff Notes and welcome to night 18 of the Overnight Feed Recaps for Big Brother Season 26. A happy Monday to all of y'all. All right, yesterday, Sunday's normally sometimes quiet in the Big Brother house. We do have a veto ceremony today though and there's there's plans afoot. We'll talk about all of them. Lots of conversations. We're going to try to Keep it all uh, nice and compact. Get, get in as much information as we can as quickly as you can. But certainly some conversations that took place last night. All right, before talking about the live feeds, let's just refresh where we are in the house. Cedric is HOH. Angela, Kenny, and Tucker are currently on the block. But Tucker won veto. So he'll be pulling himself off the block of the veto ceremony tonight or today. Right? Right? Well, maybe. Maybe not. There's actually plans for... Maybe Tucker not using the power on himself. We'll talk about that. But certainly Tucker has a decision to make on the veto. And then based on what happens, it could fall back to Cedric to pick someone. It could fall back on Mackenzie to use her power. Let us pick someone. We don't know yet. It was all discussed last night. All right. Over the past 24 hours, it started looking like MJ Mackenzie was probably the, the most likely renomination that that really realistically the easiest route is for Tucker to use a power on himself. At that point, Cedric puts MJ on the block as a replacement. She maybe uses her power, maybe not. We'll, we'll see what happens on that. That has been the plan so far, but there could be a huge blindside backdoor opportunity at play involving Quinn. Uh, and so, uh, and in addition to this, we also had overnight Cedric and Leah, my maybe, having done a little bit damage to both of their games based on some conversations, the way they're playing some people a little irritated. We're going to cover it all <laughs> again, a lot of stuff took place. So, so bear with me here. All right, let's talk about the feeds themselves. Uh, some taking place before the, the television episode last night, uh, a lot of them taking place afterwards. So a little bit of both. Let's talk about Quinn in this situation. At one point, Kenny had talked to Quinn about making a group of the two of them along with Tucker and Cedric. Uh, Quinn is saying he's down with that, uh, but later Quinn did tell Chemo and Brooklyn about this offer uh, that the the guys want to rope him in. Now, basically, this is the the uh, the shake it up guys, right? Uh, with with one extra member, but he's mentioning this to Chemo and Brooklyn. They're saying, look, Kenny's suddenly starting to play the game. I think it's time for Kenny to go home. Kenny's getting a lot more attention this week with some of the the gameplay that he is he is doing. So these guys. Uh, again, Quinn has been approached by these guys to, to join in with them, but he's reporting back to, uh, to others that it ha took place. All right. Later, Tucker talked to Cedric and Kenny, uh, which again is, is a shake it up group. These three, uh, and then there was talk about Quinn as well, but Tucker talks to Cedric and Kenny about Quinn having this power that they're just now starting to hear about that Angela knew about and tried to tell them and they poo pooed her and thought it was Lisa He's saying, look, uh, Quinn has this power. He describes what the power is. He says that Quinn apparently told Chemo, uh, but not Tucker about it. Everyone's getting suspicious of Chemo uh, because apparently that's, that's how a lot of this information came down the pike. Uh, so he's describing the power, saying that Quinn told Chemo, but not Tucker or Cam, uh, which is the Anderson Alliance, which means that Quinn and Chemo probably have some kind of final two, tighter connection, with them than anything with the uh, the Andersons Alliance. Uh, Tucker is also thinking that maybe he could stir things up a little bit this week. He can't ever be easy with Tucker. He's always got to be giving a little extra to, to what should be happening, in, in my opinion. Tucker is thinking about using the veto, but not using it on himself. Instead, using the power to take Angela off the block so that he could then go against Quinn in the AIBB arena beat Quinn, send Quinn home, and that way Quinn couldn't use the power the following week. Huge move, huge blindside. As viewers, love to see it. In terms of complicating the game from Cedric's standpoint, from Tucker's standpoint, it seems like a little too much, but but Tucker's always about the little too much. So uh, that's Tucker's plan that he's suggesting now is, I'm not going to use it on myself. I'm going to use it instead on, on Angela. We'll send Quinn out the door. Wouldn't that be something? All right, Tucker is saying that this power of Quinn's is, is what Angela blew up the house about earlier uh, and that no one believed her. Now he believes her. Now he understands what's going on. At one point, Cam came in during this conversation as well. 
So now Cam, just by virtue of walking in uh, to the conversation that Tucker was having with, with Cedric and Kenny, now these four are talking about an alliance. And in the end, they they solidify an alliance. I, I guess you call it solidify if they form an alliance and they give it a name, right? That's what everyone says. Well, they have given this group of four that you see up here. They've given this group of four a name. They're the ball players. There you go. The, the ball players uh, are, are our newest alliance in this house. Certainly not the only alliance, but our newest alliance in the house. And, and the first action they're going to take is going after Quinn, booting him out in a blind side after Tucker uses a veto on Angela instead of himself. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. The house guests had a big dinner uh, while they're eating dinner, or I guess actually a little bit afterwards, but uh, around dinner time, the house guests take turns. I can't remember who, who suggested it. Someone said, let's take turns complimenting other people uh, in the house uh, one at a time, like they did that other season. Everyone thinks that's a, a great idea. Well, that other season, pretty sure she's talking about our season, tw- season 21. And let me just say this. We did that. Uh, there was a suggestion from a few people. Let's go around the table and talk about one thing that we're grateful for. And we thought, oh, that's so nice and sweet. Sure, we'll all talk about how grateful we are. We weren't around the table. Didn't realize that grateful was the name of the big alliance. And it was just a big joke from those within the alliance that, aha, we're going to get the other people to talk about that they're grateful for something. And we'll laugh about it every time. Just goes to show that there is nothing in this house that doesn't have hidden meanings and and all kinds of levels to it don't ever think that anything is just being nice and friendly and kind there's always some kind of objective to all these things taking place but they're sitting around the table uh talking about taking turns complimenting each other Uh, eventually they break up leah is cooking apple pie gotta say she she seems like she knows what she's doing Uh, sounds like it probably smells and it's gonna taste fantastic leah's cooking apple pie angela's in there watching her most of the other house guests have dispersed uh, a lot of them are outside upstairs in the balcony area. All right, we do have at one point Cedric uh, talking to the camera, saying he's just not sure what he's going to do. If he doesn't put up Quinn, will will the ball players that just formed get mad at him? Uh, and so he's saying as well, on the good side, that if he does, if he does this, if he lets Tucker do that, he puts up uh, Quinn. At least he doesn't then have to put up uh, MJ uh, McKenzie, and he thinks that would benefit him. So. He's wondering a little bit if that would help him. Uh, but yeah, a little bit worried. Feel like now he's a little bit between a rock and a hard place in terms of decisions being made that maybe were being made by someone like Tucker and not being made by uh, Cedric. Cedric's got to be careful that he doesn't let someone hijack uh, his HOH. Cedric is talking at one point to McKenzie, letting her know that there's a chance that she could go up. He's saying most of the house wants her to hit. First, he says the rest of the house wants you to go up. And she says, everyone? He said, well... Not everyone, but but like 90%, 10 people or that. A lot of people want you up, uh, MJ. And I just, I can't go against the house at this point. Uh, so he, he's letting her know that a lot of people want her up. Uh, Mackenzie keeps saying that, look, if you put me up, I'll take myself off. So I'm safe no matter what. But then that means I can't use this power to help someone, oh, I don't know, like you, uh next week so you know yeah you could do it and i and i get it why i get why you might but it's just not going to benefit you or me uh if you do it so they have that discussion uh later cedric uh, like right after uh she gets done uh cam comes up they're discussing uh this potential opportunity to get out quinn that was discussed uh, uh, uh previously uh they're a little upset that quinn well a lot upset that quinn didn't tell them about this power they're feeling a little betrayed uh, a little hurt that Quinn didn't fill them on in on, on having this information. So at this point, you know, keep that in mind. Cedric and Cam, a little peeved at, at Quinn and, and talking about potentially going along with Tucker's plan, blindsiding Quinn. Cam is also talking about Leah. He, he's saying he's done with her. It sounds like he's upset that Leah passed on info to, to Chelsea, uh, that he had told Leah in confidence. I'm still not sure what all this information was. Was it about this new ball player alliance? Was it about MJ potentially going up on the block as the renom? Not real sure exactly what what all it was, but basically Cam's upset that Lee has been passing on stuff he told her uh, to other folks. So we've got that. Also, Cam apparently uh, told Leah, who then told MJ, uh, that it was between Leah and MJ for the for the renom. So maybe that's some of it as well. Again, he's just 
recognizing that that Lee has taken a lot of his information and passing it on to McKenzie and potentially others. So he says, I'm done. I may not even ever talk to Lee again. It's that that point. I'm just done with her. We'll see. All right, we've got Chelsea calling Cam out uh, on what he told uh, Leah. Uh, the two of them are talking, and he's basically saying, hey, Leah came with all this information, and he's saying, at first he said, I, I didn't say anything to her. I, I'm not saying anything to her. Uh, and then she basically says, you know, she says, look, Leah told me this, this, and this. It, it had to come from you, Cam. And he said, well, I'm not going to tell her stuff anymore. So he's been kind of seen as the the, uh, the sieve as far as leaking uh, and all of that. So Chelsea's calling him out a little bit uh, on that, but saying he's not going to tell her stuff anymore. Uh, later, we got Chelsea talking to Cedric. She's telling Cedric about Cam, about Cam maybe being the source of some of this information leaking. Uh, she's thinking that Leah is, is a bigger threat to the Pentagon in their game than maybe some of the other people uh, being discussed, uh, such as, as McKenzie. So d- she's staying on this path of, hey, maybe Lee is who we, we need to get out of the house. All right, we've got Cam and Kenny talking a little bit. Uh, they're thinking that if they go through with this plan of Tucker taking out Angela, Quinn going on the block, uh, Cam and Kenny are thinking that they have the votes to, to get Quinn out if that happens to be. I tried to add up the votes. It's tough to tell right now. I'm not sure if they do or not. They, we don't know. Uh, it, it could be v- possible, but uh, it, it would be a very interesting Thursday night. Uh, and we still have the AIBB arena. For all you know, Quinn wins and, and the whole thing goes away and it's Tucker versus uh, Kenny on the block. Two ball players. Well, we don't know, but they're thinking they've got the votes if Quinn, if Cedric does put Quinn up. Uh, Kenny's talking, saying, yeah, Brooklyn's going to lose her mind if that happens. It's going to just blow her away uh, if we do something like that. All right, we've got McKenzie talking to Chelsea about Cedric, who was basically hinting to her that that she, McKenzie, is going to go up. She's worried about that. She's worried about her position in the game. She's mad that Tucker uh, has told Kenny and so many others that she has a power. She's trying to keep it secret, and now she's around us realizing this idea that a lot of people want her out because Cedric has said a lot of people want you out because they're aware of the power. So she's upset that word of her having the power spread around. And that may be the incentive to now put her on the block and try to get her out the door. Uh, she thinks that Tucker wants her out because of this power. All right. Later in the pedal room, we've got t and Rubina and Chelsea and Leah uh, all talking. They're worried about a Kenny or a Tucker HOH feeling like either of these two guys would put up all women uh, and really hurt their game uh, if if that was to happen. Uh, Rubina also is worried about being connected uh, to Tucker. Uh, you know, we we heard a little talk, even though they didn't talk about it on the uh, the TV episode. There certainly has been a little talk that Rubina kind of likes Tucker, and Tucker seems friendly for Rubina, but she's a little bit worried now that Tucker's come up with some of these new plans that that she could be connected to him too much. Uh, someone asked her about, well, you know, what if he's on the block or whatever? She says, look. As long as he benefits my game, I'm happy to keep him in here. But as soon as he's not benefiting my game, he's out of here. I don't have any problem cutting Tucker loose. So Rubina making sure that that these uh, uh, ladies know that that she's working with them and and not Tucker when it comes down to it. All right, we've got Tucker and or I mean we've got Tcor and Rubina talking about Cedric telling uh, McKenzie that most of the house wanted her out of on the block and potentially sent home or at least powers flush things like that. They're upset. They feel like uh, Cedric is trying to place all the blame on others in the house. He said, oh, I wash my hands of it. I'm I'm only putting you up, McKenzie, because everyone else wants me to. I have nothing to do with it. It's just the house decision. Uh, they're upset that he's telling her that that everyone wants her on the block as a way to keep blood off his own hands. They're not they're not liking that. They're not hearing that. So, uh, yeah, Cedric, uh, maybe not getting uh, a lot of, of points for, from some of the ladies in the house right now. All right, we've got Angela in the bathroom uh, with Brooklyn and, and Chelsea. She's saying, hey, yeah, I couldn't quite figure out the point of her conversation. Uh, she's saying that Lisa for sure had the power. <laughs> Didn't she? Huh? She said for sure that Lisa had the power, that it lasted for six weeks. No, these powers both last for four weeks, but she's saying six. Are people going to remember that part and think that Quinn maybe has this thing for another couple of weeks? I don't know. We'll see, but... She's saying Lisa definitely had the power that she could change HOH. So she's describing Quinn's power right here. Uh, I'm not sure why she is lying about Lisa rather than Quinn having the power. Quinn told her, 
I think she still believes it. I, I'm pretty certain she still believes it. So by saying Lisa has it, she's trying to cover up for Quinn potentially. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what her, her gameplay is here. Maybe we'll hear more as we go forward, but she's telling everyone, yeah, the power is to change the HOH and it lasts for six weeks. So a little confusion there that, that may be intentional, maybe not. All right, we've got, I mean, think of it this way. If she knows that no matter what she says, she's bringing up about the power. And if other people do think it's Quinn, maybe it's the fact that they now will go after Quinn, especially if they think it's for six weeks. They won't think that Angela is a big power broker if she doesn't even know that Quinn has a power. So maybe it's just, Angela letting people know about the power without it looking like it came from her. I don't know, but, but they have that conversation. All right, we've got T-Core and Rubina talking about Kenny coming for the girls. They think this is very dangerous. Now, I don't think T-Core and Rubina would be the top two targets, even if, uh, if uh, Kenny did get HOH. Uh, but but they're worried about it, uh, as they should be, I think. All right, we've, uh, let's see, we talked about the big dinner and all that. Afterwards, we had most of the house guests outside on the balcony talking about movies, first dates, et cetera. They're giving Cedric a hard time for some of his lines, saying, uh, you, you actually are pretty or something, saying, yeah, that doesn't fly. And someone says, yeah, the only thing that you got going for you, Cedric, is, is your face. That's That's your play. Uh, so they're laughing about that, but talking about first date movies and uh, Quinn took someone out and I don't know, just, uh, just a bunch of non-strategic talk. Uh, so, so we do have that. All right, we've got Angela talking to Kenny, saying that, <laughs> saying, hey, maybe someone volunteered to go on the block this week because things to, seem to be so calm right now. So maybe it's just because someone volunteered and everything's set. And she says, but no one will tell me anything, so I don't know anything. Uh, you know, calm water doesn't always indicate that there's not all kinds of turbulence taking place underneath. And that's what we've got going on right here. All right, we've got Brooklyn talking to McKenzie, saying, telling McKenzie that, hey, if you did go on the block, you can beat either Angela or Kenny. So don't use your power. Why would you waste your power? Save it for next week. Not sure I agree with that information. I think if you're on the block and you got the power, use it now, protect yourself especially given that there's some uncertainty about how the rest of this week is going to play out. But Brooklyn's saying, hold on to your power. Mackenzie, use it if you got it. All right, T-Core's talking to uh, to Kimo and, and Joseph about a new alliance they're building. Lots of alliance talk. Uh, so T-Core's talking to Kimo and Joseph again. The three of them adding on Tucker and Rubina as well. And Kimo suggesting that maybe they could also add Brooklyn or Chelsea in addition so that they have enough numbers to, to do what they need to do. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think there's a name assigned to it yet, but, but yet another alliance being talked about. Uh, and again, just uh, that's T-Core, Chemo, Joseph, Tucker, Rubina, and, and Brooklyn or Chelsea to finish it off. Uh, Joseph is talking, uh, uh, saying that he told McKenzie that if she goes up, that she, she won't go home again. Someone else that's going to make McKenzie think maybe she doesn't need to use his power, but he says he told her if she won't go home, uh, that the group plan is to send out Kenny if he's still on the block Thursday. Uh, and T Core is saying that that Kenny needs to go, that none of the girls are, are safe with Kenny. It's better we get them out now while we can. All right, we've got Cam and Leah talking. Remember earlier, Cam was not happy. Uh, I was, was talking to Cedric about Leah. He's not going to talk to Leah anymore because she's just giving out stuff. So Cam and Leah are talking, and Leah's. Leah's talking about the fact that Kenny is saying that the girls are in an alliance. Cam at one point says, it's just Kenny. Now, the rest of the guys aren't saying that. Kenny is the only one saying that. Uh, but he's a little upset about that. He Cam's upset that a word has apparently gotten out about the ball players, these four, uh, that I guess he had told Leah. And then somehow the word got out uh, after that. Uh, he's complaining that he talked to Leah, and with an out, within an hour, McKenzie was up in the HOH room talking to Cedric, uh, and he's he's complaining as well, saying that now his name is getting mixed in with these these three other guys. Uh, I guess he wants to downplay or deny that that the ball players are a thing, and he's upset that that Leah has kind of spoken it into existence uh, by talking to other people. Leah responding by denying it. Uh, she's saying, "Look, I, everything you I, you tell me is in confidence." And she says, if I hear something, I go straight to the source. I don't spread rumors. I don't spread BS. So yeah, that's not me. Cam's not convinced. All right, Joseph and Cedric, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, Joseph and Cedric are talking about Quinn's power. Uh, remember, they were upset 
that uh, Quinn didn't tell them about everything else. They're starting to, to, to think about it a little bit more. Uh, and they're, they're kind of agreeing with each other that maybe it isn't that big a deal that Quinn didn't tell him because they're looking at the timeline. They're realizing that he won the power before their alliance, their, their kind of team formed. And so potentially he was already lying to people. And if you're already lying to people, then it makes it tougher to reel it back in. So they're thinking, you know, maybe it's not the end of the world and maybe it's understandable why he didn't tell everyone uh, about the power itself so so there seems like they're settling down on that a little bit their plan uh and against joseph and cedric uh cedric who was talking about putting mckenzie up and then about putting quinn up in in angela's place now they're talking about their plan would be kenny and angela over the next two weeks then after that leah and mckenzie and then tucker and rubina so they see a path uh, certainly into the jury phase by taking out those that were just mentioned I feel like people are starting to get cold feet at this point. All right, we've got uh, Mackenzie and Rubina joining Cedric and Joseph in a conversation. Joseph is saying that the renoms aren't going to go home this week. You know, hint, hint, don't worry about Mackenzie. You're, you're going to be fine. The renoms aren't going to go home this week. If anyone was to try to do that, they're done. They're out the following week. So it's just not something that you should worry about. Uh, eventually, we have Leah and Cam join the group as well. So a so fairly big group at this point. Cedric is saying that if Angela and Kenny uh, are on the block Thursday night, that just vote for for whoever is best for your game. Uh, there's too many people to talk about alliances, but Cedric's saying, vote for whatever's best for your game. This isn't going to be a house vote. Don't worry about voting with the majority or anything else. Just vote for what's best for your game, and, and it is what it is. So we still don't know between these two who potentially would go home. There's a lot of people who are throwing out different ideas. It should be Angela. It should be Kenny. Everyone's got their own thoughts based on their own game objectives. Cedric's saying, just vote Haver. Yeah, I think that's a, a reasonable idea. Uh, Mackenzie, though, <laughs> still trying to do what she can. She says her birth, brother's birthday is on eviction night. So if she's on the block, that means she can't vote. So she can't give a live shout out to her brother. And so, yeah, it's, 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 well, it's not my birthday. Sorry, Jasmine. We're, we're taking a step further. It's my brother's birthday. So please don't put me on the, uh, the eviction block. Uh, that, that's a pitch that she's uh, using uh, right now. All right, we've got Cam and Cedric talking. Cam talking about his conversation with Leah and him asking her about who's spreading word about the men's alliance, that, that Leah at that point got upset that she blamed everything on Quinn. And Cam said, you know, I kind of believe her. I think Quinn's behind a lot of this stuff. Uh, Cam thinks that Quinn is a mastermind and that Cedric, maybe he should play it safe this week, but if he wants to play it safe, but they need to start thinking about getting Quinn out sooner rather than later, because he does, does think Quinn's behind a bunch of what's going on. Uh, Cam's also thinking that Kent Quinn is setting up Brooklyn by continuing to say that she is after Kenny, which means a lot of the guys will be going after Brooklyn if they get a chance uh, and not Leah. Uh, so uh, he, he's throwing that out there. Uh, Cedric and Cam are talking about maybe sit on that information just because we know that Quinn is maybe masterminding a lot of stuff. Do we do we act on it right now or do we just sit on it for a couple of weeks and maybe do something a little bit later? Cedric's worried that Quinn, if he has any time at all, uh, or Cam, I think, that if Quinn has any time at all, he can manipulate people and get people to, to vote to save him on all of that. So they're talking about the idea, let's just sit on this. Let's just wait until we get double eviction, which should be in a couple of weeks. We get Quinn out as part of a double so he doesn't have time to to sway people's opinions and all that. Well, yeah, you don't know when that double's going to happen, so don't count on that too much. But they're talking about just sitting on Quinn's information or sitting on this this idea that Quinn's a mastermind, sitting on a little bit and just playing it safe uh, this week. Uh, Cam is saying that Quinn knows all the Pentagon secrets. Uh, that's true. And, and would possibly nominate Pentagon people if he was HOH. Maybe all three would be Pentagon people. Uh, they Cam thinks that Quinn's ultimate plan is to take out all the uh, the Pentagon people, all the athletic people, and play with T-Core and Chemo instead, which doesn't sit well with him. Cam is suggesting that Cedric says, says talk to Ced, uh, talk to Tucker. Don't, don't let him pull off Angela off the block and, and put this into play. Uh, it's just too much at this point in time. So he's saying, don't, don't do it. Cedric's saying, well, yeah, let me talk to Ced, Tucker, see if I can talk him into not doing that. Uh, Cedric is worried a little bit about the ball players alliance that if he doesn't go through with this plan tuckers now the ball players are going to be upset with him camp saying look kenny's on the the block kenny goes home that ball players 
that falls apart. You know, there's only three of us left. Tucker will be okay with it. And it's just you and me. So it's not the end of the world if the ball players are upset. I, I agree with Cam on that. All right, Cedric is planning uh, an emergency Pentagon meeting today uh, to see what they're going to do about going forward. What does he do with the veto? Does he use it to try to make a big move? Uh, it sounds like they're going to say that Quinn's game is being blown up uh, by maybe Kenny and Tucker, but certainly that, that Quinn's game is bl- being blown up and that Kenny and Tucker need to go. So he's going to try to pull in the Pentagon for right now. Instead of blowing it up by putting Quinn on the block, pull everyone together instead and, and create a couple of enemies in, in uh, Kenny and Tucker uh, and, and maybe go that direction instead. Cam is talking about, as though we don't have enough alliances already, Cam is talking about a new modified collective alliance that would be him and Cedric and Chelsea and Quinn and Brooklyn and Leah and Tucker. So uh, basically they're they're adding on uh, on Tucker uh, to this this group, if I remember the the line things, it's so big. Who can keep track? But uh, Cam proposing yet another uh, uh, type of form of of the collective alliance. Uh, Cedric is saying that that at the end of all of this, all these discussions, uh, he just had he has to put up McKenzie this week. Yeah, all this other stuff sounds fun and cute and all that, but he he came in saying he's going to play it safe. He has to put up McKenzie, so so he's going to do that. He says, the alliance is won it. Why should I go against all these alliances? And now finally talk about Cedric blowing up Quinn's game uh, and and blo- aligning with Cam and Tucker and McKenzie and Chelsea. Uh, so again, right at the very end, sounds like Cedric's made up his mind. And then we get another uh, comment about trying to blow up Quinn's game. So a lot of uncertainty, a lot of indecision yesterday, guys. Uh, lights out by, I don't know, three o'clock or so big brother time, five o'clock Houston time. Uh, but finally, we get everyone in bed. So there you have it. So today is the veto uh, nomination ceremony. Tucker will use a veto. He's not going to leave it alone. I expect, as much as all this talk happened, I expect Tucker's going to use the power on himself. Once he does that, I also expect that Cedric is then going to put McKenzie on the block. We'll see if McKenzie uses her power or not. I kind of think she will. That's my prediction. McKenzie will go ahead and use her power. And then it's up to us as, as the viewers here in America to decide who we want to go on the block uh, in, in place of Tucker. It'll be a fun week. Guys, y'all have a fantastic Monday. I'll be back tomorrow. Well, actually, I'll be back tonight. A live Cliff Notes live episode, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. We'll talk about the veto ceremony. We'll talk about what we think is going to happen because of that. Uh, so come with your questions. It's on YouTube. Uh, check me out. You can find the link on, on Instagram or on my YouTube channel. Tonight, Cliff Notes Live, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be back to give a recap of the overnights. We'll talk about this veto ceremony as well. Until then, guys, SKD 143. Cheers, my friends. Bye.